So we've seen lots of intentional identification problems. You're saying though, the, the majority of the misidentification, bad identification, wrongful convictions are not intentional. Exactly, and, and let, let's think about why it is that the other ones get attention. They're great drama. They're, they make terrific movies and they happen to be true. And we have a good guy and a bad guy. But let me give you an example of one of these cases that I'm talking about where it's not intentional misbehavior. So there's a case where a defendant is entering a house to steal a TV. At the same time, in another room, a young girl is being raped and murdered. That's being done by a different defendant. There is an eyewitness who sees the guy, uh, the, the guy who's innocent of the rape and murder, leave the house and identifies him being there at a particular time. And in fact, his fingerprints are found in the house. And the police, understandably, start to focus on him as not only being the guy who is responsible for the theft of the television, but also the rape and murder of the girl in the other room. He is not tied to the rape and murder by biological evidence, but the investigators, because of tunnel vision, get attached to the idea that he must be the guy because he was seen by an eyewitness leaving the house and there's fingerprint evidence that he was there. So I think any of us would look at that case and immediately begin to think of him as the suspect. Once you start getting attached to someone as a suspect, it gets harder and harder to disabuse yourself of that conclusion as additional evidence comes forward that challenges that. Well, all right, so the you know, here's the investigator's thought. Maybe the biological evidence doesn't fully tie him to it because there was another co-defendant there with him or this is before DNA evidence. So maybe it's simply that we didn't have very good biological evidence. It's not a, you know, it's not a match, but it doesn't mean it's not a, uh, sorry, the evidence doesn't match it, but it doesn't mean that it couldn't match it. So I think any one of us in a situation like that might think of this guy as the, as, as the guy and hold on to that. So those are the kinds of things we see where tunnel vision occurs or, there's another case that I can think out of Virginia where a, an older woman is sitting at a window looking down at a street light as a guy walks past and identifies a, a suspect as the defendant. Turns out it's not the guy. She's not trying to misidentify him. She's just has a really bad angle on him at night and police take her uh, identification and run with it. So it's cases like that that are much, much more common in the wrongful conviction world than the intentional uh, railroading of the innocent defendant. 